Our 10th video mechanics gram will seek to explain the theory behind wedge positioning. As wedge philosophy continues to evolve, many ask what factors led to the changes in philosophy for positioning on tag plays. The first answer is that changes in collision rules and various rule sets have led to an increase in swipe tag attempts in all levels of baseball. The second answer lies in the fact that as more swipe tags were attempted, umpires were now getting straight lined more frequently. Third, the expanded role of video replay in all levels of baseball have led to a reevaluation of the philosophies dictating positioning for tag plays, and therefore, wedge positioning simply adapts our mechanics to the evolving nature of the game. The theory behind wedge positioning is rooted in the following principles. First, the fielder and the runner are the two variables in the play that are constantly moving, and as the fielder is seeking to tag the runner, and the runner is seeking to avoid the fielder, the angles of the play then are constantly changing. And as the angle of the tag attempt changes constantly, our positioning must also do the same. If the two variables of the play are constantly moving, causing angles to change, then a predetermined set position by the umpire does not allow us to adjust with the changing angles as dictated by the developing play. In order to achieve optimum positioning, the umpire must constantly reposition to keep his head and eyes between the plate side hip of the fielder and the runner. This is the best viewing angle of the play as both the runner and the fielder change this angle constantly throughout the development of the tag play. Using wedge theory requires umpires to follow three basic steps to achieve optimum positioning. First, umpires must assume a starting position of 5 to 7 feet from the fielder and maintain that relationship of 5 to 7 feet throughout the duration of the play. Second, umpires must adjust with the fielder, meaning that if the fielder moves in any direction, right, left, forward, or backward, the umpire must move in that same direction, ensuring that he remains 5 to 7 feet from the fielder. The last step then is that umpires must use quiet steps to keep the head and eyes in the space between the plate side hip of the fielder and the runner for optimum viewing angle and positioning. As the wedge continues to evolve, many question the 5 to 7 feet target distance and debate whether or not that distance is too close to the play. The diagram here gives us a visual to help explain. The reason umpires should maintain a 5 to 7 feet distance from the catcher is because the angle gained in a one step adjustment, also known as our quiet steps, is far greater than if umpires were positioned further from the play. As shown in this example, our plate umpire's first step is to maintain that distance of 5 to 7 feet from the fielder. He also illustrates the second step in applying wedge theory in that he adjusts with the fielder. Note that the fielder moves slightly up the first base line, a movement then that our plate umpire also makes. These steps allow our umpire to keep his head and eyes in between the fielder and the runner to view the play. The replay shows the third step, quiet steps, that as this tag attempt is attempted to be made, our umpire continues to step into the wedge so that he maintains that relationship of keeping his head and eyes in between the fielder and the runner so that he sees down and through this tag attempt.